Okay, we are recording. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Cody's Small Business Show. I'm here with my friend Kelly. Um, Kelly runs, uh, what's the name of your company? It's Tag Consulting. Boom. Uh, yeah, so I went on this trip. Uh, I got invited to go on this thing called the Basic Course. And um, uh, well, I'm sure we'll talk more about it, but it was very intense. And uh, we hiked. Uh, do, do you know how far we hiked? Did, did you figure it out? Does anybody know? I'm, I mean, you were the navigator. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, no, I have no idea. 20 miles at least, maybe something like that. Uh, but um, I'm not super athletic. Uh, and so I, um, I, I, I struggled a bit. But we put like a big like 30, 40, it was probably like a 100 pound pack. Uh, I, I don't know how, really how heavy it was. Uh, but it, it was. Yeah, I think it was at least 50, yeah. at least 50 pounds. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I, I basically, uh, I know you, some of you guys trained for it. I, I had three days notice. Um, so I, I signed up to do this thing like forever ago. And then at the last minute, um, you know, I got the opportunity, Blake, you know, messaged and said, Hey, we're, you know, I'm in short. Do you want, you still want to do it? And I was like, Oh crap. You know, I, I do CrossFit, but nothing like I've never, like, that's literally the first time I've ever done anything like that. So uh, yeah, we got out there and then um, I quickly realized you were in, you know, an Amazon business and that's what, I, you know, that's what I do. And um, so we kind of, you know, got to know each other and talked. And so, uh, yeah, I want to uh, I want to talk about your business and um, I want to pick your brain about Amazon stuff with Q4 going on. And, um, you know, I know I know you've got so much going on all the time, but uh, right now people are just buying. Like uh, if you have it up for sale on Amazon there are people everywhere just clicking buy now and they, you know, they, they love to do that. So um, I don't really have any super notes or anything. So I, I, I just kind of figured <laughs> we'd, we'd chat. How, you have a bigger family too, right? Didn't, didn't you say that? I do. Yeah. It was really cool when we met. Cause it was like, I never would have thought another Amazon person would have been out <laughs> yeah. there. And then um, I have four kids. So we also connected on that, but um are you on? I you told me, but I don't remember. Is it number five or six now? Uh, we have five. We're about. We're, uh, my wife's pregnant with number six. So yeah, that's awesome. But, yeah, so we've got a we've got a, a zoo here as, uh, as well. I, I always joke with people. I'm like, once you hit like three or four, like adding another one in, it's not uh you know it's not that big of a deal. Like you know they just kind of my kids don't take care of themselves now. So, uh, so. yeah, it's awesome. But, uh, and you're in Texas. Yes, I'm in Texas. Very cool. Okay. So explain it to me like I'm a six year old. What does your business do? Because I know you mentioned you have a team and you, you know you've got um a bunch of stuff going on. What what what's a good referral for you? Like what's 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 your business do? Yeah. So if you have a product, let's say your company makes protein bars. Okay. What my company does is we will handle selling your product on Amazon for you. So from top to bottom, we will handle the logistics of getting your inventory there. We'll set up either a seller or a vendor account for your company. We'll create okay. all the listings. We'll do the advertising, the marketing, literally the whole nine yards for your brand specific to Amazon. Cool. Okay. So I have a buddy that has, a, um, he... I don't really know what his product is. It's something to do with a bow. Uh, he, he, it's like a bow and arrow. It's like a, the piece that goes on the bow or something. Okay. I was on Walmart and he 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 sat me down. Uh, he took me to lunch and asked me if I would help him. And I did. I did. You know, uh, but like he was wanting to go from, I don't think he's even started an Amazon account at this point because uh, he was like so overwhelmed with it. Um, you're saying instead of me being a, a scalper and buying it from him at wholesale prices and then putting it on, you're just helping them set it up direct and you're are, are you doing anything with inventory or so i help the brands manage their inventory but my company doesn't buy inventory so okay. a common way to sell on amazon is as a wholesaler right so a wholesale company would go to a brand and they would buy the inventory and then the wholesaler would sell it mm. when the way my company works is the amazon account is the brand's account so when you see their listing, it says, you know, sold by the brand name and ships from Amazon. You know, of course, we're using FBA and all, all that sure. good stuff. 
Very cool. Uh, do you ever kick anybody off of the listings? Do you ever, you're like, I'm the brand, get out, of, get out of here. Do, do, do you do any of that? So you have to be careful with that, right? Because there's a lot of legal things around all of that. Um, what, so obviously not an attorney. We don't offer like legal advice around that, but we do, will help brands and kind of point them in the right direction. Like, hey, you guys might want to consider putting in a map policy um, and you might want to consider talking to all your wholesalers and finding out who is selling on Amazon and who is actually just, you know, selling in a brick and mortar retail store <laughs> and <in> the basement. <laughs> right. And tracking it down because the big thing, so from the brand perspective, you know, the main reason they don't necessarily want everybody and their brother selling their products on Amazon is a lot of times, um, one, people start price wars, right? So they'll just totally kill the price of a product. And it's like, if this is, if this was like a $25 product and then, and you see it in, you know, your mom and pop local shop for $25, but then you pull up Amazon and it's on there for $15 that really one, it hurts your brick and mortar stores right. because they're going to start losing sales to Amazon. And then two, it, it makes the customer think, Hey, this is only worth $15, not 25. And yeah, so it is. degrades the value of your brand. And that's a really big deal for companies. Yeah, no, I, I, I totally understand that. Um, so price wars, that's a nice way to say it. We, we call it price tanking on, on my side of, uh, <laughs> um, yeah. and you know, it's classic. You get, um, you find a good deal. There was a, a lip gloss, um, that we were all, you know, I, I run a, a small group that we kind of, talk about what, what everybody's selling and um it it never fails there's that one you know person that gets on and you know marks it down to where they're making like no money and they're just you know uh they've they've cut everybody else you know out from uh, their legs out from under them so uh yeah I, that annoys me and i'm just a you know i'm just a reseller i'm just a uh, <laughs> a, a store owner on amazon but um if i were the brand and then i had millions of dollars of product at walmart or like in a retail store like what you said and then you know it's ten dollars cheaper on amazon like yeah i could see how that um how that gets could get annoying so okay all right um what what does the process look like uh like the brand comes to you they work with you they get on Amazon, like, are you just setting it up? Or are you doing like the ongoing, like maintenance, like uh, at some point, like they, are, are you running it? Is that, is that like how you, yes. how you set it? okay. Yeah. So basically my goal is if you're the brand owner, you don't ever have to log into Amazon ever if you don't want to, that's nice. how we set it up. And then, you know, some of my clients, they never want to look at it and we so we do like a weekly report a monthly report you know we're giving them the data without them having to go into amazon and try to find it um but and then we have other clients that they really want to be involved in the details and so we do that you know we collaborate together and we get real into the details and the strategy um and it's it's very much brainstorming and working together and then my team goes and executes on whatever plan we come up with nice so you're really good at this then like you, you, you i mean you, this is what you do well this is my thing and you know i mean i want to be the best in the world at what i do that's my goal um not there yet but that that's the goal <laughs> uh, you do what's it called um the ads uh ads yeah. on amazon what is it called yeah. i mean amazon advertising ppc paper yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. okay yes. I've never done anything. Uh, I, so as an arbitrage seller, like I'm not going to pay, you know, there's right. some arbitrage sellers that pay, you know, to have a little bit for whatever, you know, I, I'm, right. I, I'm not on that level yet. Um, but uh, I have a friend that launched a candy wholesale bundle. Um, and so basically he, uh, it's no real, I mean, people say private label, but it's his own brand. He legally registered a brand. He got everything. And then he, um, he's freaking killing it. Like he's doing like awesome. crazy numbers. Um, but, uh, he created the bundle. It's a bunch of different candies. And then he put it under his own, like, uh, gift box or something. Mm -hmm. Um, long story short, he, um, 
he was telling me about what he's doing with PPC and how he like had to pay a bunch to get it going. But once it was going and was ranked a certain amount, as long as he kept it in stock, that it would just fly. Mm -hmm. So, uh, do you have a brand idea? Is there something you want to do one day? Or I, I mean, you know, on how to how to launch it and like kind of seeing the um, nuts and bolts of it. Like, th is there something you want a a, a a Kelly brand one day? I mean, maybe I'm certainly open to it. I don't have like you know this product in my mind, or I would be doing it probably. <laughs> um, but we're we're really good at launching products on Amazon and launching brands and positioning them and getting getting them front of in front of the right people, right? The the sure. people that really are going to resonate well with this product and buy it and enjoy it and like it. So. Um, at some point, yes, but I am like laser focused on what we're good at and, and doing what we're good at right now. Yeah, I'm the exact opposite. I see uh, like my brain is always going thinking about the next business or the next opportunity. Uh, so it's, it's hard for me to get like laser focused on, uh, you know, something. But I, I, I can tell just from spending a little bit of time with you that you're, that's your strength. So that's that's very cool. If, if you were going to launch something that, like just knowing what you know, what category is like right for the picking? Like, what, uh, uh, like, is there a category that you've seen if somebody comes in with a little bit of money, brings a, a decent product that it's, um, you know, affordable or not affordable, it's um, conducive for like a new brand or a new, you know, uh, person to come in? So, um, so I guess to start, I've worked with almost, I'm trying to think if there's any categories I haven't worked with brands in. I think I've worked with every, <laughs> every Amazon category, which is really cool. Um, and, you know, there's things in every category that it's not, you know, people look at Amazon, they're like, oh, it's saturated. Oh, whatever. Sure. I mean, it's business. Like there's always going to be competition. So I think the biggest thing is like, you know, don't do a me too product. Don't go do, what are those? Like people joke about the, uh, the kitchen products, like the private label mm -hmm. kitchen products. What is it? Like those little claw things, the meat, uh, the garlic press, garlic press. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't do that unless you have a, you know, very unique spin on something like that. But I think, you know, whether you're selling on Amazon or just starting a business in general, you need to be solving a problem with your product, right? Or providing some kind of benefit and there should be something unique about it or better. You know, maybe it's a better quality than what's out there or it's a little bit different spin. If if you can look and there's like five listings that look exactly the same as yours and it's like the same thing just with a different tag on it, mm -hmm. then you're not, you know, how far are you really going to go with that? <laughs> yeah, sure, you're right, right, yeah. Or you get to spend a ton of money on advertising to try to get to the top spot and then um you're not profitable right well and even even that like let's say you basically pay for the top spot because you can essentially do that right sure. if your product isn't very good then you're never going to make money because you're going to get bad reviews you know or or mediocre reviews and eventually you're just going to start you know falling back down and organically even if you're paying for the number one spot with your ad if you're not converting well, your organic rank for that keyword is actually going to start going down. Really? Oh, yeah. That stinks. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean you can pay for that top spot? What does that mean? So like somebody types in, uh, like it, here's where my, my brain's at. So I'm, I'm an arbitrage seller. I buy from like Walmart and then, you know, yeah. flip it on Amazon. Could I, could I PPC, like if I have a super profitable toy or, or whatever, um, could I pay to have that pot? the top spot, uh, top slot for, um, like my arbitrage product. Can it, can I, is that possible? So, yeah. So as long as you have the buy box, your ad will show if you're running a sponsored product ad. So, okay. so if you're, cause I'm guessing there's probably more than one seller on the listing, right? Yeah. A bunch. But when you have the buy box, you, your ad can show, um, there's, I don't know how how far you want to go into ads. I love this stuff, so I'll I'll I'm get doing nothing your... about it, and I have all the time in the world. So yeah, no doubt. So um, so there's three types of three main types of ads on Amazon. You have sponsored awesome. product, and those are the ones where you search Christmas toys, right? 
And in the search results, those ads look like a search result and it just says sponsored, right? Okay. I've seen that's that. That's sponsored product. That's That would be the best type for you to run as an arbitrage seller. Sponsored brand ads are like those big banners that you'll see at the top. Um, it usually has like three products, a picture, like the brand logo. Um, sure. Those are great for brands. Um, you Building brand awareness. You can promote multiple product lines in the same ads. There's a lot of things you can do with those. Okay. Um, those video ads, you probably see a lot on Amazon now. Those are also sponsored brand. Okay. The thing about sponsored brand ads to know as a wholesaler or an arbitrage seller is if, if you, Cody, are paying for the ad, but there's 10 sellers on the listing, that ad is going to show even if you're not in the buy box. So you're paying to help anybody sell that product, gotcha. not just yourself. I didn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> so, um, and then the last type is sponsored display. And those can show up both on and off of Amazon. And on Amazon, there's a lot of product detail page placements. There's there's a lot of different placements, but the, that's probably the most common for sponsored display. Gotcha. You've got my mind kind of spinning. There. So I had this idea uh, a while back and I talked, I, I have a, a, a close friend that's also, a, you know, he does exactly what I do. And he he was like, no, I don't think it would work. There are like tens of thousands of like ghost listings that are just like no seller, no seller, we call them no seller listings. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the 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 idea for arbitrage is you find those and then you can kind of just name your price almost um because there's literally no competition on yep. them until somebody finds you know uh, and then seeps into the listing but right. like you the problem with those is sometimes they're ranked like eight hundred thousand or something um mm -hmm. because they haven't had a sell in two years or something so my idea was we have software like run it find those listings and then try to reverse source them and, um, you know, and just jump on and see, you know, see how it goes. Uh, would PP PPC would help with that? Like you could, oh, if, yeah. if I'm the only one on there, like that could probably speed up getting some attention to that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, so, and you probably have already thought about this, but if I was going to do that, um, look at something like Keepa, there's a lot of tools that'll do it right. Look at the sales history of when it was in stock and see where, how it was going. That yes. would be a big part of how I would make my decision because when it was in stock, if it was doing great, then, okay, this is probably like a good bet. But if it was like never doing that great, then yeah. I would stay away from it. Yeah, that makes sense. So, okay. I'm going to share my, my only private label idea that I've ever had. Um, so, um, I wanted to uh, now. Now that I'm saying it, it's not even that impressive. Uh, but I did like I wrote it out and like had had like a plan. Um, I was gonna make a Michelada kit. Um, uh, so like the uh, like the cup, the stuff to dip your uh, like the tahini sauce and all yeah. of that in a kit and sell the kit. And yeah. I thought it was just the best idea in the world. And then um, I I started looking at sourcing in Mexico because I thought that was cool. Apparently that's not where anybody sources. And uh, I, I looked at, um, have you ever used helium 10? Do you know what that is? Oh, helium 10 is my jam. I use oh, it every sure. day. Like it is one of my favorite softwares. Yeah, it's awesome. I, I paid for the seven day trial or whatever trial it was at that time. Yeah. So I, I, I had that many days to, uh, I'm kind of I'm kind of cheap. Um, I, I had that many days to, um, to play with it, but I thought it was a great idea. So if you would you do a food like would you do like a a food product or something like that like is that, is that oh yeah i i mean i work with a lot of grocery brands and a lot of health and supplement brands so okay, sure. um i would definitely i would not be scared of products like that i mean i think it's a cool idea i haven't looked at what the demand is for it or what the competition mm -hmm. is um but i mean I like in my head, I'm like, oh, you could package this really cool. And it sure. would be like a fun gift. Um, and I will say in the grocery category, especially on Amazon, variety packs and gift sets do really well for grocery items. Nice. So for anybody that has a grocery brand out there, a variety, like you want to have a variety pack on Amazon. Sure. That makes sense. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like I should... Uh, if if there is a grocery brand out there, um, 
we were selling little Debbie cakes. I'm not making this up. We were selling them for uh, $32. It was $32 or $34 for a two pack of little Debbies. Um, and people were paying that, like they were buying them. And then on top of that, they were paying overnight shipping. Like they were paying to like get one to two day X fat shipping. They were, they weren't just regular. They were like a certain flavor or something. But I think it's just like, that's crazy to me. Like why, why does, uh, like, why do those companies not just sell them themselves or like have some sort of setup to, you know, um, to do, to do like, all I'm doing is just driving to Walmart and picking it up. So, uh, yeah. You know. It's crazy. And it really shows how, you know, the demand on Amazon for, let's say, maybe you can drive down the street to your grocery store and get them no problem. But maybe like, you know, I'm in Texas, maybe they're not in Texas. Sure. You know, um, so it's really interesting when you see stuff like that happen. And then sometimes, um, sometimes with a listing like that, like if it was only a two pack, it might have been a full case listing at one point and gotten changed or something sometimes people like that kind of thing happens yeah you hear about those though they they <laughs> they, they yell at you after they buy it right um, so obviously the people you know you didn't get a bunch of returns so i guess people were happy with their 32 dollar little debbies all i can think of is i just go by the data so like we just read keepa and we just you know we we have a software called tactical arbitrage and we just kind of scrub and just whatever the data says, that's kind of how we buy. Um, it blows my mind though. Like all I can figure is just rich dummy people. You know, the, it's the same people that are paying like $40 to have a hamburger Uber eats delivered to them, I guess. Yeah, uh, I guess that doesn't, I don't relate to that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It seems crazy to me. Uh, okay, cool. So, um, what did you think about the basic course? And uh, I, I don't know if Chad will ever see this. Uh, I, I kind of <laughs> hope he doesn't because I'm, I'm, I'm a little intimidated. Uh, but uh, <laughs> um, what, did, what did you think about, like, what, what were your thoughts? Like, what, what was your big takeaway? I loved it. I yeah. loved every minute of being out there. I thought it was awesome. Um, I guess, so for people that haven't heard of the basic course, I guess, I guess we should approach yeah. it that way, right? Um, so it's put on by the three of seven projects. So they've got like a podcast and a YouTube channel. And um, I'm curious how you got connected with them. Cause I'm just curious how everybody that made it, you know, on the course, like found their way there. Right. Yeah. Like, I, mm -hmm. um, I, I actually, so I listen, um, I listen to a few podcasts, not a whole bunch of different ones, but I listened to one called real AF and Chad was on there a, like a couple of years back. Maybe for Cello? Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. was the first time I ever heard Chad on a podcast too. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. So that's, yeah, I heard him and I was just like, man, like something about just the way he talked and everything. I was like, I kind of like resonate with this guy. I want to hear more about what he has to say just in general. Um, and so started listening to his podcast as well. Heard about the basic course. One of the things that I think is cool is they really don't tell there's not a lot of information out there about the basic course nothing yeah yeah and so I was like you know I just have this like good feeling about this like I think this is something I should go do I know it involves hiking in the woods and backpacking and you know learning some life skills and it'll be something that's a little bit out of my comfort zone um but sounds like a good idea. So yeah, I signed up and I signed up probably a year before, almost a year before we went. So I applied and, you know, basically forgot about it. <laughs> so yeah. How did, how did you, uh... I'm like literally almost the exact situation. <laughs> I remember, so we, we were in our old house, so it would have had to been over a year ago. Um, it was probably like mid 2021 or something like that. And I, you know, I filled out the thing uh, after hearing, I listened to it on Andy Frisella. So Chad is, his brother goes to my church. And so, um, so I'm, I've known his brother for a long time. And, um, and then, so uh, there's this crazy story that um, anybody listens to, you want, if you want to look it up um, about Chad being at a, um, he's a Navy SEAL. He's with the Navy SEAL team and in a, like abandoned something or another. Like I forget where he was, um, but it, he was like on a mission and the place was haunted. 
uh, like there were there were like um, spirits like actively haunting these tough Navy SEAL guys. And so Chad wasn't saved at the time. And he called his brother and his brother got on the phone with a pastor and the pastor prayed with him and then helped him essentially, I don't know how you explain it, cast the demons out of this place. And um, that was my, that's my lead pastor. That's where I go to church is uh, um, that's pastor James. So uh, yeah, so that, so it's kind of a small world thing. And uh, to be honest, if I had, if I had been like invited when I signed up, I would have literally died. I would have literally not made it. <laughs> I wouldn't have made it to the top, much less halfway there. Uh, like uh, I, I, I've been working on getting like more into shape and more like uh, fit. And, you know, I, I, I have a bunch of kids and so I know they're going to have grandkids and I, you know, I want to live long enough to, uh, you know, to see all that. So I'm like trying to be healthier, but like, there's no way. Um, just the sheer like uh like physical side of it was like it, i was barely there this time like barely uh and uh, you're selling yourself short you did really well cody like you said so he said i was taken i was, I was well, the pain in my heart <laughs> well you i mean you did really good like you even carried some extra weight like you you did a great job i mean and one of the things that I thought was really cool too, was even when I could tell, like it was physically wearing you down um, on sat like Saturday afternoon, I think there was like one time I specifically remember um, your attitude was just amazing. Like, <laughs> I think you were cracking jokes, like, you know, everything. And it was just awesome. The energy you were putting out. All the people that we were there with were so cool. And there was no way I was going to have like a bad attitude or like, like show weakness if I could, if I could help it. Like um, it was me and maybe one or two other people that were, you know, really, you know, uh, on the struggle bus a little bit. And, uh, and I remember coming around the corner and um, one of the people there was, we were carrying some extra weight and uh he had gotten tired. And so he asked if I wanted to. And so I put it, I, I had my backpack on and then I had the backpack over it and I came around the corner and somehow, I don't know, Chad is like a ghost or something. He was like ahead of me somehow. And he was like, that second pack looks good on you. And I was like, yeah, I'm gonna carry the second pack to the end of the world. You know, like, uh, like I was, uh, but I pulled a muscle at one point. Or yeah. I don't know. I had like cramps or something. I was in, I was in rough shape. I will never forget. So, um, I've never drank water anywhere except for like a bottle of water, like a normal human being. Um, <laughs> me and you were on water duty and we yes. went down the side of this mountain. Was it Brandon was his name? Yeah. 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 With Brandon and um, we were pulling water. Like we literally had a PVC pipe that there was a puddle here and the puddle had salamanders and it like had live like little creatures in the water and we put the pvc pipe into the water and drained it into this big thing and i was like this is the craziest thing i've ever done like and it wasn't a fast process like we sat there and you know uh, it was a long time just sitting there like yeah uh, well and then it before we even got to that part i mean we climbed down the side of the mountain looking for the trickle of water and <laughs> Cody threw a tree at me in the process. Uh, that. <laughs> so watch out. The man will throw trees. <laughs> no. hey, how are you supposed to know? <laughs> no. I but, put my phone uh, on it and it just fell. I was like, oh, geez. That's my I know that, that was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that was one of the, um, I don't know. That was one of the really cool ex parts of the trip for me was like getting the water out of this little like puddle like yeah. this little trickle of water um that was really cool yeah we brought water back for the entire camp and it was literally like like i remember chad specifically saying or no maybe it was chad or somebody was there he said yeah just don't let the salamander come into the pvc pipe and i was like <laughs> what are you talking about that's insane and yeah. uh yeah that was, that was brutal. Uh, okay i made some notes on my thoughts from the basic course by the way, if anybody watches this and you want to go do this thing, um, check out the Three of Seven project. Um, they're amazing. Uh, I've I binge watched a bunch of their YouTube and you know a lot of their content before I went, but since I've been back, I've just kind of been watching it as it comes out. Um, 
it's really good stuff, you know, uh, like, especially if you're a Christian, um, but even if you're not, like, there's just, like, a lot of good life stuff in there, so, um, okay, so here are some things I wrote, uh, things Chad said that really impacted me, so one was be a professional, um, like, I don't know why that kind of resonated with me, but it was like, he was like, if you're going to do something, um, the example where he was talking about it was, um, he was like, don't let things hang off of your backpack the whole time while you're going, just be a professional, just do it the right way. And, uh, that I thought that was, that, that, that really came home to me. Okay. The second one, um, uh, the lesson on the trucker knot, um, I, don't, I actually don't remember what the knot was called, which is funny. Um, but, uh, I think that's what he called it at one point. Um, so basically there's two trees and you're putting up, uh, um, not a tent, but, a tarp. yeah, tarp. Yeah. And so you have to, there's strings on each side of the, um, tarp that you have to pull down. But like the moment that I kind of had moment of clarity, um, and I had a lot of moments of clarity. You're hiking with this heavy weight and you're kind of thirsty and hungry and like, you're not, you know, um, at one point I cried like a baby. Um, we did this, uh, solo walk, the first solo walk that we did and I was walking and then there's this part where you just come in, like, you can just see the whole horizon and you're by yourself, like in the woods, I cried like a baby. Uh, uh, so, yeah. Um, but anyways, um, so he, he's showing how to make these tarps and I thought to myself, this is going to take forever because you're going to have to, it's, it's literally like a string here and then a string here and you have to like time to do it and then he went over and he did it literally in like two seconds like it was he pulled one pulled this and he said you sent since this and then you pull this and then he did it like so fast and i had like this moment for my business like there are processes like that that i do that are painful and long and take way too long like if i'll just take some time to slow down and like innovate and learn how to do it uh a better way, I guess, or like learn how to do it like a, like a more efficient way, then that'll serve me. Like there's no telling how many times he's tied that knot. So like at some point, obviously he has extensive Navy SEAL training and blah, blah, blah. He knows probably not that, you know, or whatever, but it really impacted me to like, that was one of my big takeaways was like, I need to find all the knots that I'm tying every day in my business and figure out like if I can shave off five minutes of work, then it's gonna it's gonna help me every step you know going forward so um that's a silly one but uh no that i think that's like a really important takeaway and i do feel like anybody that's thinking about going you know there's no matter who you are whether you have a business or not um it's going to challenge you whether you're you know a professional athlete or not this is going to challenge you um because it's like the three of seven thing, what is it like body, mind, and spirit, something mm -hmm. like that. It's going to challenge you in one, at least one of those areas, probably all three. Um, and I, being a business owner as well, I was doing the same thing, looking at these, you know, tying a knot, right. You don't like, it's, it's a skill, but you can look at the things we learned from that and apply them to your business. So hundred percent. Yeah. Just having like a like a like the checklist, the way he came into camp and he was like, All right, this is what we do and this is how we do it. And then like, oh, okay. You know, like ha I guess I've never really had that sort of leadership. Like I, I've been on sales teams and I've been on like um like really good sales teams. Like uh like I've been I've I've been lucky to be a part of like cool cool uh organizations, but I guess the way he kind of ran it, like if I if I can have good processes and then hold the team accountable to them, like where's the slack? Like, like you can literally just, you know, just knock it out. So uh, PS uh, you did great too. Did, don't you, did, did you say that you do like, uh, like long distance running or something? Like, is that? Um, I dabble. <laughs> um, yeah. So I do like day to day. I do CrossFit multiple times a week. I really enjoy that. And then the CrossFit right now. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I, I like, um, you know, having a business where you work at your house, it's nice to get out and be around some people, some adults, not just the little people. Right. <laughs> um, and so I, and I'm very competitive. I'm very, very competitive. So even 
like in the CrossFit gym, I'm able, like, of course I want everybody to do good, but I also can push myself. Cause I see these other girls that like, they're amazing and they're like so strong and they've got a six pack and it's like, I can compete against myself, but I can also push myself to try to close that gap a little bit with where they are. So yep. I love it. The two big outlets that I have are, um, the CrossFit gym, uh, like, if you would have told me, like, we're paying a good bit of money to for my wife and I to do CrossFit, and it's it seems absurd because there's like a there's literally another gym in my town that's like two minutes closer to our house, and uh, you know, like it's like right there, and and it's like thirty dollars a month or something. But right. having like everybody in there is serious about what they're doing. You know, you go in, and then the competitive side. Like yesterday, we did a row, and it was. Um, 30 second row and then a minute rest 10 rounds of that and see how far you could get. And oh, that's awesome. uh, yeah. And <laughs> I love the rower. <laughs> do you, okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and so you go in and you see everybody else's score on the whiteboard and you're like, Oh, well, you know, I could beat that maybe, you know? And so then you yeah. just like push yourself and go. And then the other kind of outlet that I have that's social is um, at the, the group of resellers that, I, that they're all doing the same thing I'm doing. They're arbitrage sellers. And so, I wouldn't say we're really competitive in there, but we're kind of like, we're, we're egging each other on. Like we, you know, you, you see them really grow in their business. And like, I did X amount of sales, you know, it's like, well, I need to step my game up. If he can do it out of his basement, I can do it out of my basement, you know? And yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, um, you know, that's, um, that's kind of that, but I don't know the fitness side. I want my life coach does, like ultra running he does like big um he just did a 50 miler um no no i think maybe he did a hundred miler see i don't even know i don't even know like there that's the same distance right. uh, yeah um uh, that's insane to me i can't imagine running that amount of like distance so um one of my good friends actually two of my good friends um i got the opportunity to crew for them uh and they so originally they were signed up to do a 150 mile race. Good we, Lord. we did not hit the 150, but we, we got them both through a hundred and obviously they got themselves through a hundred. Um, but me and some other friends crewed for them and it was a really, really cool experience. I really enjoyed it. So, um, when you sign up, you know, for your first like 50 K or marathon, you let me know. I'll totally come out there with you. Um, I'll totally, I'll come run it with you or crew for you or however I can support you. Um, I think it's something everybody should like do at least one. You don't, you don't have to do another one, but push yourself and do it one time. Um, it's, it's a really cool experience. I think, I'm not sure of this, but I think I could gut out a half marathon. Like if I just went oh. and you CrossFit, you 100% can. You could probably also, uh, you could you could do a marathon. You'd yeah, probably, that's crazy. You, There's no way. You no, know, you, you, but like, what do you, so a lot of people think about a marathon or an ultra and they think you're running every second of it. You don't mm -hmm. have, like, what's the worst thing that happens? You stop, you walk, right? You, okay. so, so doing CrossFit and, and based on what I saw, at the basic course, like I, I've seen your physical fitness level, yeah. you could absolutely hike a marathon right now. You absolutely could. That's insane. Okay. Uh, I, I have a friend that just went to Disney and ran a half marathon. And uh, I, I was just thinking about, I was like, I was thinking about the distance and I was like, I could probably, I could probably do that. Like I've never ran anything. Like, I did row a half marathon one time. Nice. Uh, so uh, the, the year that the CrossFit games did the full marathon as their opener, yeah, I said, I'm going to try half of that. And I, I pulled it off and I, I, that was painful, but I, I did that. So That's awesome. So yeah. random tangent here. So one of my bucket list things that I really want to do is there's this race in Texas called the Texas Water Safari. And you canoe or you kayak from like the middle of Texas to the Gulf of Mexico. That sounds awesome. It sounds amazing. You get like 100 hours to do it. Um, and yeah. So anyways, that's one of my like bucket list goals. <laughs> Are you looking at the kayak mission with chat that Chad does the uh, Alpine, whatever? Have you, looked um, if he does it again, I will definitely apply. I would love to, like, I love the water. So that, 
that sounds like my kind of thing. <laughs> that sounds absolutely insane to go and do that. Like, uh, like it's one thing to do it. Like the, just to talk about Chad for a second, like I'm, I, I'm a different person after being around him for a couple of days. Like, and I didn't know Chad at all before. Like I've never met him before, before there's like literally a, a complete strangers, but um, I'm so inspired by that guy. Like he like, completely changed my perspective on some things and like really like really helped me as a person with that said being in a kayak with with chad for you know days on like that sounds intimidating that sounds pretty really yeah, oh i think it sounds like a blast yeah <laughs> oh that's awesome well, maybe i just need to train more I, if i had showed up with like two months of like a, two months more of like training for something like that i think i might have been a little less intimidated but yeah, I mean, I was I was definitely worried about how I was going to do with the pack because even though I CrossFit, I have never backpacked. So I was genuinely a little bit concerned about that. Um, but it it went well. <laughs> so yeah, no, it went well. Now you're underselling yourself. Uh, they did the at the end of the um, of the trip. They uh, I guess it's a Navy SEAL thing. Everybody voted on uh who was number one and who was you know number two three four all the way down the, the pack and kelly was our uh honor woman number one voted across the board as the um i guess the the biggest asset is that how it was phrased uh so uh yeah so. that's a bigger that's a big thing you, it, that was it, really cool yeah that was really cool and uh uh i was impressed uh, you saved my my tail on uh so do you, I don't know if you remember, not the first time that you gave me the, um, or no, no, it was the first time. What is it? Salty britches? Is that what it's called? Oh, um, yeah. It's like the That's little pink. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> I drove, I was terrified of being late. I was already late and <laughs> I didn't have boots at all. I didn't have any boots. I just had those ugly blue tennis shoes that I brought. And uh, that was the only thing I was supposed to stop and get boots, but I was running late. So I stopped and ran in this Walmart and bought those like Ozark Hill uh, boots. And first time I ever wore them went out and uh, it tore my feet up. Like that was rough. Yeah. And you said, does anybody have any, you know, uh, like rough spots or something like that? And I, and I made a joke and I was like, yeah, like really bad. <laughs> and I've never heard of that stuff. And yeah. Uh, yeah, it helped me a lot. So Yeah. yeah so um chad actually interviewed the lady that that's her business on his podcast one time it was a really good episode if you've never listened to that one um and so i checked it out because when i do like the trail trail running and stuff um at some point you know you can get some blisters or you can get some hot spots and even if you don't it's like a great preventative to just kind of put it on before you start if you're gonna go for a long time sure. um so I knew it worked well. And then the other thing it works really well for, and I think this is, I don't want to get her story wrong, but I think this was kind of the original intent is she had her kid um, when he would like play in the ocean, you know how your swimsuit can kind of rub and chafe and stuff. Yeah. So my kids have that problem like in the ocean or even just like the pool in general, we don't live by the ocean. Um, and so I, they use it for that too. And my kids are always like, yeah, it's awesome. Like, <laughs> cause it hurts so bad if you chafe, <laughs> you know, yeah. when you're at the ocean. I, I bet that's a good product on Amazon. I bet, I bet she does a bunch. Uh, oh, I would imagine. So it works. That stuff yeah. is great. So I was really glad that that helped. And I brought it for that reason. Cause I was like, I just felt like some, I myself <laughs> or somebody else was going to need it. And I definitely yeah. was putting it on my feet too. Yeah, at first I was like, I'm not putting this stuff uh, on my feet, and then uh, and then I was like, you know what? These people know a lot more than me, so I'm gonna <laughs> I'm glad I did. So okay, all right. My my other takeaways. Let's see, we're at 44 minutes. Um, okay, so um, okay, ha know when to go fast and when to slow way down and be intentional about it. Um, the way that they have that struck, and I didn't realize it was so intentional until probably a week after and I was just kind of thinking back but they did the trip I keep saying the trip like we had a cart carrying us around the hike um they did the uh like it was all this is the mission we're driving towards the mission we're going as fast as we can and uh um 
and then when we sat down and like everything was done and we were talking about you know like around the campfire and like talking about whatever everything just slowed way down and it was like it was like um thinking back on that like that was kind of a big a big i think i think that helped me a lot like and now like even with my kids now like a lot of times it's just kind of like let's get through this let's get through this but knowing how to like change gears and just go like the business can wait the um you know school can wait whatever let's talk like let's just stop everything or not even stop just like slow it like way down and here's the time this you know deserves like let's talk about it so um, yeah no that's huge it's something i struggle with too like really sure. being fully engaged in what i'm doing and that was something like you had to do out on the basic right. course you had to be mentally 100 percent engaged or you're gonna like i mean i did trip and fall actually um <laughs> I think only only one person saw, um, but it would have happened. <laughs> more. Friend, so everybody saw mine. <laughs> yeah, would have happened more if I hadn't been engaged. But you you just really have to focus on what you're doing, and like especially like I think you guys with the navigating had to really stay locked on to what y'all were doing. Um, yes, we did. Yeah. So and it, it's important to like be able to go go go, but also slow down, and then. Um, one of the cool things was we we would discuss the day and kind of pull out your takeaways, like reflect on what's going on and what you're learning. Don't just be go, 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 go. And then you kind of miss that part of it. Yeah, I feel the same way. And, and like that's like like it's tra- like I, I'm a workaholic. Like I, I know that. About myself. Yeah. And so like it's wake up, task, 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 all the way through the day and just knocking stuff out and getting, you know, like that's how it is all the time. And it's, I know that it's like super high on my priority list to have quality time with the kids and, you know, but also like not treating that like a task. Like when we sat down to talk about the stuff we talked about around the campfire, like Chad would have just sat there all night long, like, all three of the, you know, the chap, uh, not chap, the, uh, like the, the leaders, like they would have, they would have absolutely sat there all night long and listened and talked and went back and forth, uh, you know, like as long as it, even if it had taken an hour longer, like they had planned for that, like, this is important stuff. And so slowing down, you know, so, yeah. um, I wrote down, uh, how to poop in the woods, which is funny. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I wrote down, you can drink salamander water. And then um, the last thing was uh, how to delegate to a team and then hold them accountable to results. Like uh, I was on a, a sales team one time. Um, we were building an ins- uh, a farmer's insurance agency. So we literally grew it from zero. Like we didn't have any customers when we started. And um, I was responsible for the sales team, like growing, you know, like finding new customers. And I think, uh, I think I would have been 50% better than I was just if I had went and done this trip, uh, you know, uh, done the basic course before I did that. Like, and we did good. Like, we, you know, like I'm not knocking, you know, what we did, like we, 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 we grew pretty fast. Like we did good, but just the way that Chad would, delegate and he would say this is how you this is how we do things and then holding you accountable all the way through you know um you you've mentioned i was the navigator several times i, I haven't told anybody that uh story yet because <laughs> <laughs> i had never seen a map before in my life i've never literally never looked at a map or, or a compass really for that matter and so um he is handing out jobs and he says hey you know uh who wants to be the navigator and i'm so thankful that I went over there with um, Buddy, and then he said, um, "Who wants to be the lead navigator?" And I was like, "Not me. I, <laughs> I'll do the work that nobody wants to do, but I don't want to be in charge of it." And uh, uh, I don't know, maybe it could have been different, but um, but yeah, yeah, that that was uh, being able. Like, you have a team. Like, do, do you have people that like are working under you that are doing um, stuff for your business? Yeah, I actually there's eight people that work with me on our team, which is awesome. Um, yeah, it's, I'm seven years in now. So like, I, I mean, it was just me for a long time and then, um, just a couple of us for a long time. And it recently, like last year was where we kind of went from three people 
and not all of them full time to eight, and a lot of <laughs> a lot of us are full time. So, so that I mean, that's got to even be even bigger for you. Like, um, oh yeah, I was I trying to learn just learn as much as I could about well, and in general, I'm tr trying to learn as much as I can about being a better leader because. Yeah. I want to build a business where everybody on my team can build their dream life for their family. Right. Sure. Like, but if I'm not doing an awesome job as a leader and like executing every day and leading my team in the right direction and giving them opportunities, then we're not going to grow to a point where they can do that. So yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> that's amazing. That's uh, like, um, like that. I'm so glad I met you. That, like that, that is really cool. Uh, I, I have one full-time employee and a, and a half. And so one that kind of just does like different tasks for me. Um, and, uh, and mine are, mine are virtual assistants. So they're like, yeah, which is somewhat easier in some ways. And then in some ways it's, it's, it's harder to, uh, you know, cause, but, um, being able to come back and like, articulate exactly. Cause like, that was my thing. Like, my brain immediately went to, oh, this is how we tie strings now. You know, like it's just this is the way we do it. And if you don't like that, you know, like like we got to figure out how to get you to to do that. And so, um, you know, driving results with the business, but also like n articulating exactly how I want it done. Like, uh, you know, that 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 was that was a big takeaway. So, yeah, yeah, I felt like there was just so many um times throughout the weekend where just like leadership lessons and and how to work as a team even because even if you're not the leader right of the team you can still be lead, leading and contributing and moving the team in the right direction um so i just there were so many different times throughout there where something would happen and then when we'd finally kind of work our way through it as a team it was like after the fact, you're like, oh, we could have solved this way sooner. <laughs> like, yeah. oh, this is this is like a simple issue to solve. But you know, you can just file those file those lessons away and then do better next time. Yeah. If I could do anything different, if I could go back in time, I would have learned how to read a map before I went. <laughs> that was the number one thing. So uh, I, I'm kind of glad it went the way it went. But uh, yeah, I can read a map now. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Well, um, hey, thank you for coming on. I will. Uh, I don't know how I'm, how exactly to edit this, so this is one of the things, the strings that I need to figure out in my business. Uh, this is the the third episode of my um, my long form YouTube stuff. So uh, you know, uh, probably won't have like a million uh, people hitting you up, but if uh, if they do, um, like. How do, how do we contact you? What's uh, what 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 do you, what do you uh, what's the best way to reach out to you? So the best way is my email, which is long. So I'll give it to you. Maybe you can put it in like some notes somewhere. Okay. Um, I don't know exactly how this works, but uh, it's Kelly at tagconsultinggroup.com, and yeah. it's it's tag because when I first started my business, I'd call up you know one of my brands I was working with, be like. And, you know, they answer, oh, hey, who is it? And I was like, oh, it's Kelly, the Amazon girl. Um, they always, they all called me the Amazon girl. So that's what tag stands for. And now we have girls and guys on the team. But hey, guy starts with a G too. So yeah, there you go. Yeah. Covers everybody. <laughs> you, ha you need to be on social media. You need to be like, uh, like so many of the people that are like in my, my circle that are like friends and people I've met over time, like they would love your content like if you put out a reel about the different kind of ppc or the different um you know different like like that it seems so obvious to me that you should be you know because like i'm a big gary v fan uh do you know gary vaynerchuk um have you heard of that I know who he is, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah i'm a huge fan like a huge fanboy. um and uh he said to put out content and uh when i started putting out content i didn't have anything to make content about like I was like, like, I'm not very, you know, like, uh, interesting. I'm not do at the time I wasn't doing a business. I'm not doing like, and I just started recording crap and, and going and, uh, you know, um, now I look back, like it's so much a part of my business. Like 
there's uh, there's nowhere there's no way I would be where I'm at if I hadn't have been putting out content and networking and meeting people because yeah, you put out a thing and it says I'm Kelly Tag Consulting I help brands start on Amazon and then somehow I just sold something on eBay um, <laughs> uh, somehow um, somebody's niece shares it and then it's like the CEO of Coca-Cola or uh, maybe shoot lower. It's the CEO of some other beverage. Oh, no, we're going to shoot for the top. Hey, there you go. Yeah. yeah. We'll shoot low. Take it on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, that I, I think you should be, I, 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 it, if I could give any value to what you're doing, I think you need to be like, even if it's like one a week uh, or, you know, just hold the phone like this, like literally just, you can't see this. Hold the phone like this and yeah. just talk and then hit okay. submit and uh like amazing things happen like i like i i've met crazy people like people that are doing seven figures a month and all of a sudden just because for one reason for they saw me put out a post and they're like commented on it and then now we follow each other and then we start dming about whatever and like we're friends now like we like talk to each other you know so uh a, a lot like this relationship you know like I'm absolutely going to have an idea for a private label and I'm going to be like, Hey, I need your help. Like, how do we, you know, how do we yeah. blow this up? So awesome. Well, I will help you with the private label and PPC and you can hold me accountable on getting onto social media <laughs> and creating content. Uh, uh oh, uh, let's see. I'm going to call through my computer. That's, no. that is not professional. Uh, okay, okay, cool. Work well, that out. This is only episode three. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, Kelly, thank you so much for your time. Uh, yeah, thanks for having really, me. Yeah, catch up. Don't don't lose touch. No, for sure. You too. All right, we'll talk to you later. See you. Bye. Okay. Bye. All right. Thank you for watching Cody's Business Show, episode number three. Kelly was awesome, and we'll see you guys next time.